bringing you the latest news from around the world and here at home. I'm Sandal Ferdinando. And I'm Nicola De Zerza. We start off with a look at our top stories. 60 more projects of Pibidabo Polon Narwa vested with the people. Minister Lakshman Kiriallo orders investigation into a director who obtained a loan for his company through People's Bank. Perpetual Treasury's beneficial owner Arjun Aloysius and CEO Kasun Pali Sena further remanded. Two other officials of PTL arrested. Army commander says Sri Lanka Army will not withdraw from the Jaffna fort. Several more projects completed under the Pibidemu Polonara District Development Program were vested in the public today. A walking path constructed under the Pibidemu Polonara District Development Program was declared open this morning. The walking path was constructed at a cost of 5.52 million rupees. Meanwhile, a cricket ground comprising of five pitches, which was constructed at Royal College Polonara at a cost of 250 million rupees, was declared open today. The ground was opened under the auspices of President Sirisena and several ministers and MPs. Thereafter, the President met with players from Royal, Ananda and Nalanda Colleges, Colombo. President Sirisena also distributed cricket equipment for four schools in the district, including the Sevenapitiya Mahavidyalaya. Students of Royal College presented a memento to the President. The Aralagan Villa Kidney Disease Prevention Unit, which belongs to the Dimbulagala Medical Officers of Health Division, was declared open by the President this morning. A recreational centre and laboratory which was constructed at the Aralagan Village Regional Hospital was declared open under the auspices of the President. President Maitri Pala Sirisena also took part in the occasion to declare open the Aralagan Villa Zonal Educational Office this morning. A three-storey building comprising of 36 classrooms built at the Aralagan Villa Central College was vested among the students of the school under the Pibidemu Polo Noro District Development Programme this morning. The building was built at a cost of 63.75 million rupees. After you became the president, you brought in several laws into the country. The Right to Information Act. This wasn't something formulated for the MPs, ministers, nor the high-ranking officials. It was for the rural community to strengthen the people of this country by giving them the right to know what is happening to their tax money. President Sirisena also attended the event to declare open the new building of the Vilayaya Primary School this morning and later took part in the occasion to open the medical offices of Health Division of the Valley Khanda Hospital. A sum of 134.09 million rupees has been spent under the Pibidemu Polo Norway District Development Program. President Maitri Pala Sirisena took part in the event to declare open the new building consisting of eight classrooms for the Haven Pitya Tamil School. The building was built at a cost of 22 million rupees. Newspapers report that salaries of ministers and parliamentarians are to be increased by 215%. The Lanka Deepa and the Daily Mirror newspaper reported that the salaries of ministers, deputy ministers, state ministers and all parliamentarians are likely to be increased on par with the recent salary increase given to judges. According to the paper, the need to increase salaries had come up for discussion at the party leaders meeting held on the 17th of July. The paper notes a salary increment would be effective from January this year and that it would be paid this month with the areas. Accordingly, the salary of an MP would increase from 54,285 rupees to 120,000 rupees, while the salary of a deputy minister goes up from 63,500 rupees to 135,000 rupees, while the salary of a minister and a state minister would be increased from 65,000 rupees to 140,000 rupees. In the year 2016, steps were taken to provide an allowance of 100,000 and a phone allowance of 50,000 rupees to ministers. Dano, 
ശ്രീലങ്കാരി <laughs> <laughs> President's counsel Nalin Ladwe Hetty today informed before court that Nishantha Sri Varna Singha has misled court under oath while providing evidence of the complaint pertaining to the case filed against former MP Tiran Alas and four others over the misappropriation of close to 200 million rupees. President's counsel produced before court four affidavits certifying that the evidence provided by Varna Singha with regard to Venerable Akmi Mana Dayarat Natero, Venerable Ulapane Sumangala Tero, Kirti Tenakon and Maithi Gunaratna were false. Nishanta Shri Varna Singha providing evidence before court had stated that the group including Maithi Gunaratna, Kirti Tenakon and Venerable Ulapane Sumangala Tero held discussions with him to hand over the documents regarding the said transactions to the Inspector General of Police. However, submitting affidavits, the group said the statement made by Varna Singha was false. The recording of evidence of the case was postponed to the 4th of October. Though there are serious suspicions over the Chinese projects taking place in Sri Lanka, construction work at the Colombo port city is taking place in haste. News First's Zofik Farzan joins us from the Gold Face Green. What you see behind me is the development project known as the Colombo Port City Development Project. Now I am right here at Golf Face Green and behind me is something that started off very small and became a massive and huge development project which is going to include skyscrapers, hotels and possibly swimming pools with glass bottoms, recreational centers, parks, restaurants and many more aspects that will show and give the sign of development taking place here in the heart of Colombo. But there's something happening here. Golf is green is going to be no more because the beach right behind us is fading away day by day. However, despite the beach going missing over here, you can have your enjoyment at the Colombo Port City when it comes to life in a few years. The Colombo Port City is likely to be a city that is bigger than the city of Colombo itself. For the news first team with my cameraman Nandan Vimalasena, I'm Zulkri Farzan from the Golf is Green in Colombo. The beneficial owner of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Arjun Aloysius, and its CEO Kasun Palisena were further remanded until the 9th of August by Fort Magistrate Lanka Jairatna this afternoon. News first, news first Zulfik Farzan reports. former perpetual treasuries limited chief dealer nuan salgado and its it executive sachit devatantwe were granted a surety bail of rupees 300000 each by the fort magistrate court today though they were granted bail they were moved to remand custody as they failed to comply with one of the bail conditions which was to surrender their passports to court nuan salgado and sachit devatantwe were arrested by the criminal investigations department this morning They were arrested under the charge of tampering with and destroying the vital telephone call conversations that had been made during the period of the Central Bank Treasury Bond scam. Senior Deputy Solicitor General Hari Priya Jasundara appearing on behalf of the Attorney General informed court that the prosecution hopes to produce both Salgado and Devatantri as crown witnesses in this case. The incident where a director of People's Bank obtained a 10 billion rupee loan for another company he is affiliated to has sparked controversy in the country. Senior banker Rusiri Pala Tenakon commented on the matter.
now this uh, this the person who is being questioned on the, in the with regard to this deal and the information is one Ms. Amaratunga who has been a director of the bank uh, from the from 19 uh, from 2011 2012 period yeah. so he has been in the board of directors and he has continued uh, unbroken in his position as the director of the People's Bank even under the present regime. Mm. So in the first place, this is a very strange set of affairs. No, I mean, we don't see any other director or a person who is continuing from that regime to this regime uh, unbroken. Mm. And when it happens, when this person happens to be the chairman of the audit committee of the People's Bank, there is a requirement by the central bank that with regard to the related party transactions, any related party transaction by a banking institution has to be referred to an audit committee of the same bank. So this person is seated in the same committee? He is there as the chairman. That so itself is unethical. That itself is unethical. But in the books of the bank, I was told by some bank employees that they were trying to trace where this 200, 500 million debenture is uh, reflecting. They say they can't see it. So therefore, if that is the case, it is going to be a very big, serious affair. Journalists questioned Minister Mangala Samarvira regarding this at a media briefing convened. Are you aware of the fact that a loan has been granted by the People's Bank amounting to 10 billion to a company where Jehan Amartunga, who is the director of the bank, is functioning as vice president? <laughs> I have to provide an explanation regarding this. Banks grant loans based on the decision reached by the management. There are boards in these banks to control these matters. There is no intervention whatsoever from the minister or the state minister when granting loans. Produce this question to the bank. They will be able to provide you the details as we do not intervene. We do not have the details of persons who obtain the loans. The subjects, banks, do not fall under us. This is not an institution that comes under the finance ministry. Is it ethical for a person who is serving as a director of the bank to obtain a loan from the same bank for a company he is working in? Conflict of interest. There is a conflict of interest. Not only a bank, a conflict of interest can happen anywhere. When there is a conflict of interest, the people who are approving have to be aware of it. Then they can make a decision as to whether they are doing something or not. Mano Tittavella, who is an advisor to the Ministry of Finance, also arrived at the media briefing and journalists questioned him regarding the issue surrounding ETI Finance. <laughs> Following the media briefing, when questions were raised regarding ETI, this was the response of Mano Tittavella. <laughs> Minister Mangala Samarvira and State Minister Iran Vikramaratna spoke about conflict of interest at the media briefing today. Isn't it a conflict of interest when the person who was the chairman and managing director of the EAP group to which ETI Finance belongs is now functioning as an advisor to the Ministry of Finance? Mano Tittavella also functions as a board member at Sri Lankan Airlines as well as the Secretary General of the Secretariat for Coordinating Reconciliation Mechanisms. During former governments, Mano Tittavella has held several key positions. Minister Malik Samaravikrama held an inspection tour of the construction of a tyre factory in Horana recently along with Nandana Lokuvitana who is allegedly involved in financial misappropriation during the previous government. Lokuvitana is the current owner of Spevil Silon, of which Minister Malik Samaravikrama was functioning as a director in the past. Jehan Amaratunga, who has obtained a loan of 10 billion rupees from the People's Bank for his company, has taken up his post as director of the People's Bank during the last government in the year 2010. 
All these individuals are working well to make sure that their objectives are reached. The people of the country now say that there is no difference between the people that were in power and the people who are holding power at present. Minister of Public Enterprise Lakshman Kiriyala said he has ordered for an immediate investigation to be conducted on a director of People's Bank who obtained a loan for a company he is affiliated to. I myself got to know about it through the media. I need to thank the media for making such revelations. I have ordered the Ministry Secretary and the Chairman of People's Bank to conduct an investigation to ascertain if this incident is true or false. I have also called for a report to be submitted to me. We must praise this good measure taken by the Minister, which comes after a long time. But we are keeping a close watch. If the orders issued by the Minister will get implemented. Shouldn't the irregularities of the other institutions be investigated and the law be enacted as well? The people are watching. Youth MPs of the Joint Opposition convened a media briefing today. Just a couple of months ago, Minister Malik Samaravikrama brought an amazing proposal to Cabinet. It was an amendment proposal for a mixed development project on a state-owned land down Baladakshamavata between Bera Lake and Shangri-La Hotel, which will be implemented by Perennial Real Estate Holdings Limited. This was among the land acts presented last week. This act was presented not for anything else, but to give the ownership of this land to the Singaporean company, Perennial Real Estate Holdings Limited. The state valuation for this is 12.5 million rupees per perch. Think about how it will be in another eight years. Won't the value of the land in this country rise? We believe if there was a need to lease out a land like this, tenders could have been called for a much better price. Now there is another Singapore company coming and asking another piece of land behind Shangri-La. That Singapore company, who is the owner? Nobody knows. Whom are you giving it? Only Mr. Tittavala and Malik Samarikra knows who these people are. Our concern is, who is bringing money and from where this money is coming? Are this money sent out of this country and coming in white form? The black money coming in white form is a big question to be asked. We know several billions of rupees still cannot be accounted for. And they are also not only coming as investors into Sri Lanka, they are also coming and taking over position in Malik Samarik in the private companies. The Sri Lanka uh, Singapore trade agreement. Sri Lanka trade agreement, everybody is criticizing. The minister could not reply to the questions that were raised. Minister was told that it was sent back to cabinet for after ratification and that it should go back to cabinet. It, it did not go. The minister has still not made a statement to that. So now in that, they feel that 174 papers are missing. Who is responsible for this? Somebody has to take the responsibility. Meanwhile, the joint opposition made a revelation today on the Knuckles Reserve. Knuckles Rakshitaya, Videsha Samagam Walter. A minister presented a cabinet paper to hand over the Knuckles Reserve to foreign companies. They took a step back because of the opposition towards it. But now we have got to know that they are trying to give 1,200 acres of land close to the reserve at 2,856 rupees per acre. Well, However, government ministers constantly said that there aren't such projects at the Knuckles Reserve. Approval has not been given for any investment in the Knuckles Forest Reserve. Show us where this has happened. Not with facts. There are no facts to claim certain areas were given. There is nothing about this. Nothing to say. Speaking at a meeting to discuss about the Enterprise Sri Lanka program, which was held at the Jaffna District Secretariat, former President Chandrika Bandar Naika Kumaratunga spoke on the roots of corruption in the country. Unfortunately, governments, all governments have done this, not only in the North and East, but everywhere. <coughs> Ministers and ministries, and sometimes commercial councils, decide what should be done for the people, and they just distributed. And there is very little participation of the people. And I personally believe that this is the major reason for uh, the large amount and uh, large amount of corruption which is increasing day by day in this country. The people are not involved and very often the top ministers, ministries and maybe even top officials uh, prefer the people not to get uh, involved because they, they can do what they like. This has led, in fact, to government-led development programs costing most of them double or three times the actual cost. 
and especially during the government of the uh, past government, 2005 to 2015, it increased exponentially. Previously, the increased costs which would have been included the commissions taken by politicians and officials uh, would have been about 10, 25 percent. But after 2005, it became 50, it became 100 percent, or 50 percent, 50 to 100 percent. Nimal Siripal de Silva, the Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation, inspected the Ratmalan Airport today. The government aims to launch a project to develop the Ratmalan Airport as an international airport and the existing Sri Lanka Air Force base and its operations are to be moved elsewhere. Is this an attempt to sell the airport like what you did with the Makkal Airport? Who is selling this? Are you the owner? There is no idea of selling this area. The Indian State Minister of Civil Aviation says there is no proposal of taking off the management at Matthala. You should be happy if it is not the case. Those who oppose the handover of Matthala should be happy about it. Is this an issue for you? Is this going to be given to the private sector? We will decide on that matter at the appropriate time. The Indian Airport Authority has discussed the matter with us. The discussions have not reached a conclusion. This is not for sale to the Indian Airport Authority. This will be developed as a joint venture and there is a proposal for that. They want to construct a company under this joint venture where 70% will be purchased by the Indian Airport Authority and that money will be used to pay off the debt. However, recently the Indian Minister of State for Civil Aviation announced there is no proposal under consideration for the Airports Authority of India to buy a controlling stake in Sri Lanka's Mathal International Airport. An Indian MP raised a question at the Indian Lok Sabha over this matter and in response the Indian Minister of State for Civil Aviation said there was no proposal under consideration for the Airports Authority of India to buy a controlling stake in Mathala or even for a PPP. The statements made by Minister Nimal Siripala can be viewed as those being made as his hopes of becoming Prime Minister faded away. When Indians say no, the Minister keeps on saying this is being discussed. He must stop lying to the people. The Minister is establishing the fact that the government itself is lying and has become a joke. Commander of the Sri Lanka Army, Lieutenant General Mahesh Sena Naika, toured Jaffna yesterday. During his tour, the Army commander visited the Jaffna fort. I would like to remind everybody that the Army had been here for many generations now. This is not the first time the Sri Lanka Army is uh, staying inside the Jaffna fort. Uh, long back we have been occupying. And during the 1960s, even the Tafai duties time, Army had been here. When you say it is a fortress, it is very simply means that the fortress belongs to the military. It is nobody else. There is uh, nothing new about it and there is nothing to get alarmed to say that the uh, Army is going to uh, occupy new. It is not true. It is the army we already been here and we are going to continue. There is no reason for us to go out. And even any civilian uh, or the government agencies comes into the fort, you all will come. A special commemorative postal cover was released by the Sri Lankan Postal Department to mark the 100th year anniversary of Shirdi Sai Baba Samadhi this evening. The chief guest for the event was Minister of Post Postal Services, and Muslim Religious Affairs, MHA Halim. The event was held at the Sai Nathanin Saraniyalam Srila Sri Varanatha Raja Vinayagar Temple. The officials of the... ...will be etched in history forever. And with that, we wrap up tonight's primetime news. Thank you for joining us. For the News First team, I'm Nicola Dezoiza. And I'm Sandra Ferdinando. Take, Take care, care and good, and good night. night.